This is All About Bitcoin, a show dedicated to all things questions and markets related to Bitcoin, a little b for the currency and Bitcoin, big b for the network, a collective journey to understand, apply and use this innovation, all Bitcoin, all the time. I'm your host, Christine Lee, checking in for a live look at Bitcoin, the Coindesk Bitcoin Price XBX Index, right now trading above 36,000 at 36,272. Bitcoin is up about six point and a quarter percent over the past 24 hours. The most reliable reference prices for institutions since 2014 are now published under the Coindesk brand, trusted globally as a leader in crypto news events and data. Taking a look at some of our top stories, Bitcoin mining hash rate plummeting to a one-year low with Bitcoin mining difficulty set for a 25% drop at the next reset, according to Glassnode estimates. Concerns about the extent of the China crackdown on mining have contributed to Bitcoin's price slide over the past couple of months. South China Morning Post also reporting that exiting miners from China have forced small hydropower stations to go up for sale at bargain rate. Meanwhile, Mexico's finance minister, Arturo Herrera, reiterating Monday that cryptocurrencies are banned in the country's financial system. This comes after Mexican billionaire Ricardo Salinas Pliego tweeted that his bank plans to accept Bitcoin. Herrera also emphasized that those bans will not be lifted anytime soon. Farther south of the border, El Salvador is reportedly working with Blockstream to issue government bonds on Bitcoin sidechain liquid network. And Morgan Stanley buying over 28,000 shares of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, moving deeper into the cryptocurrency space after seeing increased demand from its clients. Filings show shares were purchased through the banking giant's Europe Opportunity Fund. Morgan Stanley started offering Bitcoin investment fund products in March for wealthy clients. Grayscale is owned by Coindesk parent company Digital Currency Group. And finally, crypto data firm Chainalysis is adding another 100 million in venture capital, the firm's second 100 million raise this year at a 4.2 billion valuation as crypto's role in ransomware becomes a mainstream concern. Joining us now to discuss is Chainalysis chief product officer, Pratima Aurora. Welcome to the show, Pratima. So this is very exciting for you guys. This is a Series E round of funding that was led by Kwatu Management. And this is, ha- this is happening as demand by banks and law enforcement to track illicit funds moving across public blockchains uh, increases, which helped U.S. authorities seize half the Bitcoin ransom paid by Colonial Pipeline to the dark side hacking group. Can you discuss Chainalysis' role in this hacking incident? So, hi, Christine. I'm super excited to be here, and thank you for having me. Um, you know, Chainalysis' mission is to provide trust in blockchain, and how do we um, bring that trust to all our customers out there. You know, last year itself, Chainalysis helped about uh, find out 125 million of ransomware that was help us collect it through that. We provide data to government agencies, financial institutions um, who are using this data to find uh, those payments. So are criminals catching on, moving away from Bitcoin towards privacy-focused coins, perhaps? What what kind of data are you seeing? You know, privacy coins are uh, very interesting. While um, there are some illicit actors using privacy coins in an attempt to obfuscate their transaction, they haven't been adapted uh, to the extent um, that one may expect. Uh, the reason is they aren't as liquid as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, uh, especially not that many exchanges have delisted privacy coins, uh, given the regulatory guidance. They're becoming increasingly impractical in some ways. That's what we are seeing. Mm-hmm. So, so are to buy and sell goods and services, uh, there is there's much more difficulty with privacy coins. Right. But in, in the news cycle, we're seeing this increase in ransomware and cyber attacks with the meatpacking plants, with colonial pipeline energy companies. A lot of uh, it's moved toward essential service firms, essentially. And so I wonder what, what are you seeing in terms of is that activity increasing as uh, as as time goes on or what, what is the current state of that right now? Yeah, so ransomware is a legitimate problem. Like I think we all we all know that. Uh, Chain analysis has helped trace more than 125 million in ransomware payments so far this year. The good news is that the traceability of ransomware payments in crypto is actually a benefit 
uh, to law enforcement. And we have seen uh, them leverage blockchain analysis for arrests and seizures related to ransomware activity. But it's also worth noting that the activity like ransomware uh, makes up less than 1% of cryptocurrency transactions. Uh, While illicit activities should be taken seriously and, you know, that's and it's big mission for us. Mass, the vast majority of the crypto activity is legitimate, and crypto mm-hmm. is regulated. So we're not seeing an unprecedented increase in that, uh, but it is a legitimate problem. Yet yeah, there's a lot of interest in your company. It seems uh, with these uh, investors. So is that part of what is driving the, this latest round of funding? There's more people interested in being able to track this kind of activity. What we are seeing is a lot of demand from private sector right now, not just public sector. So as cryptocurrency is becoming more mainstream, financial institutions are experiencing unprecedented demand for it. Um, Obviously, government agencies are prioritizing threats like ransomware, but we are also seeing demand from private sector, cryptocurrency exchanges, who are also looking at competitive edge. Um, So we're Mm -hmm. seeing demand from all different segments who are growing very fast for us. Mm-hmm. And what do you plan to do with this latest couple of rounds of funding? You know, so we've raised this money to definitely meet the demands of our customers uh, and products. So we raised Series E to meet the demands uh, of our products. The timing is perfect because we actually just launched a new product yesterday called Market Intel for financial institutions to perform cryptocurrency market analysis. So in short, we are continuing to invest in our underlying underlying data set, expanding that data set, providing APIs for people to access it, and also the software products uh, on top of it that help our government agencies, our financial institutions, and uh, other exchanges uh, to use that data. Switching topics, hoping we can talk a bit about Bitcoin price. Um, what kind of activity are you seeing in terms of whale um, off uh, inflows, outflows right now amid Morgan Stanley's bet on crypto and more institutions signal- signaling interest? Uh, do you have, do you know that data on hand? What what is happening with uh, big investors and holders of crypto? I will not have that data to provide that, Christine, uh, but I. And this is not an investment advice at all, but I do believe cryptocurrency is one of the most important inventions of our time. And we are seeing more and more organizations, event, you know, are taking them seriously and eventually transacting in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I won't have specifics on the data, too, uh, and won't be the best person to answer that question for you. Fair enough. Pratima, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on this latest raise. Looking forward to seeing your latest developments in the field of ransomware. Thank you, Christine. Have a good one. Me too. All right, that was Chainalysis Chief Product Officer Pratima Aurora coming up. North American Bitcoin mining industry, it's primed for big growth. We'll discuss with Compass Mining. The chart of the day is brought to you by Crypto.com, the world's fastest growing crypto app. Check this out. Estimated annual Coinbase rewards as compiled by Compass Mining. Coinbase rewards are fee compensation awarded basically to miners for processing Bitcoin transactions. And we can see that until 2017, the value of annualized Coinbase rewards for mining Bitcoin was less than $1 billion. But by the end of the year of 2017, the value skyrocketed to over $10 billion. According to Co- uh, Compass Mining, greater rewards spurred greater investment into mining equipment and what was previously a high-risk industry with widely opaque business practices began to evolve into an industry where manufacturers competed on professionalism and transparency. When Bitcoin crashed in 2018, so too did Coinbase Rewards, which didn't exceed $10 billion again until recently. As of March 1st, the Coinbase Rewards market has been over $10 billion for 10 weeks and shows no sign of retreat below decabillion again. According to Compass, a vast 
vastly bigger block rewards market has important implications for how the hardware market may evolve. And joining us now to discuss is Zach Vole, Director of Content and Research at Compass Mining and former Coindesker. Welcome to the show. Zach, you've just published the North American Bitcoin Mining Index Report, so congratulations on that. And one of your findings is that greater Coinbase rewards have generated greater profits for existing miners, which means more investment in hardware, infrastructure, and competition. So how is that dynamic playing out in the Bitcoin mining world right now. Yeah. Hey, Christine, it's great to be back. I'm um, excited to talk about the, well, I mean, there's so much going on in mining right now. Um, it, up to until, I guess, about a month and a half ago, um, it's been one of the most lucrative times for to be in mining, um, just given the price appreciation of Bitcoin uh, since March 2020. Um, and now, curiously, even though the price is significantly off its highs from mid-April, um, Bitcoin miners are still about to see a significant boost in their uh, bottom lines from the, uh, that is miners with a machine still online, from the massive difficulty downward adjustment we're about to see in early July. Um, basically the way that happens is it's easier to mine Bitcoin now than it was at er similar price levels earlier in the year. Um, but the same time, the, the price at which Bitcoin's difficulty was last at the level it's about to fall to, Bitcoin was trading around nine thousand dollars. Now it's almost at thirty-five or thirty-six thousand um, dollars. So for a much more expensive Bitcoin, the amount of energy required to mine a Bitcoin is is the same level as it was. Um, I think this was uh, late twenty nineteen or early twenty twenty. Um, but across mm -hmm. the board, we've seen massive revenue inflows for miners. The more money that flows into mining, the more they can invest in uh, better hosting facilities, buying new hardware, um, and general improvements in market structure. So there's, that, there's really, uh, unless you were, there's really never been a seeing, better time to mine Bitcoin. Right. I'm seeing uh, one miner, Argo Blockchain, just announcing that they secured a 20 million Bitcoin back loan agreement to expand its operations in Texas. So we do see some investment in the space. But from your report, what, what are some of the key findings that you found? Yeah, for sure. Um, I wish we had an hour to talk about it or more. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, over almost 50 pages of research compiled over about a six month period um, with input from dozens of miners, manufacturers and other industry leaders. Um, I think like the high level takeaway is that there's just massive growth potential for mining in North America. Um, and we see a lot of people talk about this, a lot of headlines, a lot of social media chatter. Um, but the purpose of this report is to really offer uh, a, a solid source uh, sort of to clarify the growth potential, the limitations, and just the, the landscape of what mining looks like in the U.S. and Canada now. Um, the growth potential for North America basically comes from its advantages with clear regulatory regimes, much stronger capital markets, um, and those both feeding into this region's opportunity to supplant China's hash rate and hardware market dominance. Um, we already mm -hmm. saw this opportunity blossoming over the past year and a half to two years. Um, and it's sort of serendipitous that this crackdown in China, although it's a major headache for a bunch of miners, um, is, is just making the, the opportunity for North American miners to grow that much larger. Um, so Will that really crackdown in China hasten the North American growth in Bitcoin mining? Absolutely, yes, but there is one major impediment to it, um, which is also discussed in the report. So miners are leaving China right now and, and sort of going a lot of them to North America, um, but many of them also to wherever they can find available rack space. The industry is, is grappling with a severe shortage of hosting facility space right now. Um, North America, Kazakhstan, parts of Africa, Latin America, all over. Um, so basically all miners want now is a facility that can power their machines. A lot of them are coming to North America. Um, but one thing that's important to keep in mind is while we and many others are very bullish on North American mining uh, over the next decade or more, uh, we're not bullish on sort of a recentralization of hash rates we've seen historically in China. And I don't think that will ever happen, but it's important to keep in mind that while we want a significant amount of hash rate to come back to the network, a lot of it to come to North America. We don't really want a, a China 2.0 where North America mm -hmm. sort of dominates 65, 70% of the network. And Zach, you mentioned some of the limitations of North American mining. What might some of those limitations be? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the primary limitation right now is is facility hosting space or rack space, as it's more commonly called. Um, basically, shelves that can power these ASICs. There just isn't enough of it to go around right now. There was already a shortage of rack space before the China crackdown. And what China did basically is flood the market with ASICs that are now searching for homes that don't have them anymore. Um, so people were already looking for rack space, and now there's two, three, four, five X number of people looking for more rack space. And that takes time to build, like at least one to two, sometimes three year lead time before these new facilities can be built. Like you mentioned, Argo and Riot and many other companies are building these facilities, but it'll take time for the machines leaving China to come and find space to be hosted. Um, but a lot of that space <laughs> is in North America. It's, it's very bullish for North American miners on all sides, hosting, pools, manufacturers, um, all sorts of mining companies. There's also some big regional differences in North America, Canada versus the United States, Texas versus New York. Maybe you can go to some of those. Yeah, absolutely. Those, those differences are very interesting, in my opinion, because, um, I, I mean, in the comparisons you just mentioned, the U.S. versus Canada and then within the U.S., places like Texas versus New York, the, the trade off generally comes down to regulatory regimes versus energy prices. Um, I mean, just comparing the U.S. to Canada, for example, miners in Canada, in certain parts of Canada, um, to put it mildly, regulation can be a major headache for them. Um, in the U.S., not so much at all. Um, and there's different types of energy sources and pricing for those energy sources across the different countries and within regions of both countries as well. Um, so when miners within the region already or migrating to the region from other places, for example, China, are evaluating North American availability, um, generally they're considering the trade-off between energy prices and regulatory regimes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you can read more about the North American Bitcoin Mining Index report at Compass Mining. Zach, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your insights. Thanks, Christine. Always a pleasure. That was Compass Mining Content and Research Director Zach Vole. And that's it for All About Bitcoin. I'm your host, Christine Lee. Join us tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in New York for First Mover, your first look at the day's global crypto news headlines. You're watching Coindesk TV.